Hello, hello, hello. How is everyone on today? Happy Thursday. We are into Refresh Your Hope. Refresh Your Hope. And it might seem like a long time before we get back to refreshing our hope, but daily we should refresh our hope. We should refresh our hope. And having a devotion, it only just, you know, it, it, it helps us to stay connected and refreshing our hope in the word of God and even with our relationship with Christ Jesus. And so we are talking about uh, the God of wisdom on today, the God of wisdom. And it says right here in James 1, 5, in 1, 5, it says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and upbraid it not, and it shall be given him. And that's the King James Version. But let me read another version to you. If of any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Most gracious and holy God, we thank you all today that we can come to you without you finding fault, asking for wisdom, and you will generously give it to us. Father God, we ask that you will bless your word as it goes forth on today, let your word be a piece of comfort for someone that's seeking wisdom. Let them seek it from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so guess what? God is a God of wisdom. He's awesome and he is truly mighty. And you know, we ask God to grant us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change but courage to change the things and wisdom to know the difference. So we are talking about God's wisdom, not our wisdom, but God's wisdom. But if we ask God for wisdom, he graciously, he generously gives it to us. And so we are to ask God for wisdom, for coping with our trials, not just for deliverance from them, because sometimes God does not deliver us from our trials, but he helps us to cope with our trials. And so wisdom means the spiritual capacity to see and evaluate life and conduct from God's point of view. He gives us that to do. And in Proverbs chapter one, verse two here, Proverbs chapter one, verse two, I will get to that in a moment, but we ought to ask God for wisdom and God will generously give it to us. And in chapter one of Proverbs, verse two, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding. As used here in this book of Proverbs, wisdom means living and thinking according to God's righteous truth and his ways. It means to approach all of life from God's point of view. See, a lot of times we as humans, we approach our lives with our own point of view but we need to approach our lives with god's point of view believing in everything god says is right and true and the only sure standard by which to live see god's way is the only the only sure way the only sure standard way to live and see gaining god's wisdom is far better than possessing silver and gold. You understand that is far better than possessing silver and gold. And in Proverbs chapter three, verses 13 through 14, happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that get it understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver and the grain thereof than fine gold. You see what I'm saying here? Fine gold go see wisdom is better it is far better than possessing silver and gold and see it wisdom comes only to those who seek it through a proper relationship with god verse 7 the fear of the lord is the beginning of knowledge but fools despise wisdom and instruction fools despise wisdom and instruction. See, a reverent awe of God's power, majesty, and holiness produces in us a holy fear of transgression, his revealed will. Now, such reverence 
is essential to gain in a heart of wisdom. Now, the New Testament indicates that the sincere fear of the Lord in our hearts will be accompanied, <clears throat> excuse me, by the comfort of the Holy Spirit, Acts 9.31. It will be, we will be comforted by the Holy Spirit. And see, and a diligent study of his word, a diligent study of God's word. Chapter three, verse one through three, the blessings that we have of wisdom, the blessing of wisdom. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Verse three, let not mercy and truth forsake thee, bind them about thy neck, write them up on the table of thine heart. We got to write it, these words up on the table of thy hearts, writing the words on the table of our hearts. See in here, in here for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. <clears throat> Generally speaking, obeying God and living by his holy principles will result in better health. You, you do agree with that, right? Uh, you do agree with that. Verse eight, it shall be health to thy navel and marvel, marrow to thy bones. Health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. A longer life and a happier and more prosperous life. More prosperous life. Length of days is in her right hand and in her left hand, riches and honor. See, earthly riches and honor do not always come to us, even though we are living according to God's wisdom. And we have to understand that. So don't be disappointed. But we can be sure that we will receive everlasting riches and honor from God as our future inheritance. Luke 16, 11, Ephesians 1, 18. You can read that in Ephesians 3, 8, that, you know, uh, that we can be sure that we're going to receive everlasting riches and honor for God honor from God as our future inheritance. I'm looking for my future inheritance. I don't know about you, but I hope that you're looking for your future inheritance. We ought to ask God for this wisdom, right? And however, this general principle must not be taken as an absolute guarantee to which there are no exceptions. Now, now at the times uh, or at times, the righteous are afflicted and Job was afflicted. If you go and read Job chapter one through two, Job was afflicted and, and do not live long lives. Acts 7, 59 through 60. But conversely, sometimes it is the wicked who are healthy and prosperous. And we've seen that too. Psalm 73, three, you know, and, and in uh, James, you know, five, five, you know, we've seen, you know, some uh, wicked people, uh, you know, they have long health and they're prospering. And, and they the, and some folks have said that he just too mean to die. She just too mean to die. You hear what I'm saying? They live long lives, even though they've been wicked and they've been mean and they've been angry and they've been horrible towards other people. And through their final judgment, though, it's sure. See, there's going to be a final judgment. And, and uh, in James chapter five, verses one through five, we all going to have a final judgment. James chapter five, verse one through five. Go to now, because see, there's going to be some, some miseries of the rich. There will be miseries of the rich. And so go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eating. Your gold and silver is cankered and the rust of them shall be a witness against you and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. Behold, the hire of the laborers which have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, cry it, and the cries of them which have reaped or entered into the ears of the Lord of Seboah. Ye have lived in pleasure on the earth and been wanton. Ye have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter. See, the Bible, the Bible does not teach that all rich people are ungodly. See, we spoke of that in a previous video, right? But nevertheless, what James is describing is characteristic of many people with wealth. The characteristic of, uh, in verse six, ye have condemned and killed the just, and he doth not resist you. See, uh, the exceptions 
are the rich people who are not possessed by their wealth and use it instead to advance the gospel and to help those in need. We talked about that in a previous video, that there are some wealthy people that are not wicked, they, that they use their wealth to, to help others and to advance the gospel. But then there's the ones that, that we talked about, the miseries of the rich. They're ungodly. They, they don't use their wealth to help other folks. And, and even in, uh, you know, uh, even in these times, they haven't gotten it yet. Uh, you know, it, they just have not gotten it. You know, my brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the, the Lord of glory with respect of person. For if they're coming to your assembly, a man with a gold ring in goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment. And verse three goes on to say, and ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing and say to him, sit thou here in a good place and say to the poor, stand thou there or sit there under my footstool. Verse four, are ye not then partial in yourselves or become judges of evil thoughts? Hmm. But verse five, hearken my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he hath promised to them that love him? Verse six, but ye have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment of seats. Do not they blaspheme that worship name by the which the year called? If ye fulfill the royal law according to scripture, thy shall love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. But if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors. See, my beloved, the poor, uh, the poor are special and precious to God. See, often it is the poor in this world who are the richest in faith and spiritual gifts and who in their need cry out most intensely to God in sincere hunger for his presence, merely uh, a presence, mercy and help, mercy and help. Luke 6, 20 through 21. Now, the economically depressed around the world learn they cannot put their trust in material possessions. Therefore, they respond more readily to Jesus' invitation to come unto me, all ye that labor and, and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. My brothers and sisters, we have to seek wisdom from God. We have to seek wisdom from God. There is no other way but to seek it from God, because when we seek wisdom from God, it clears some things up, puts us in a better perspective with God. And it puts us in a right relationship with Christ when we seek wisdom from the Lord, not from man, not from the world standards, but seeking wisdom from the Lord. See, and it involves making right choices. Amen, somebody. And doing, you know, right things according to both the will of God revealed in his word and the leading of the Holy Spirit. Because if you don't have wisdom from God, you're going to treat the poor man that walked in the church different from the rich man, right? And that's just one prime example. But there are so many other examples. So many other examples. And uh, let us go to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 4 through 17. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. 
but to be spiritually minded is life and peace because the carnal mind is enmity against God for it is not subject to the law of God neither indeed can be so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God but ye are not in the flesh but in the spirit if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you now if any man have not the spirit of Christ he is none of his and if Christ be in you the body is dead because of sin but the spirit is life because of righteousness but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you see therefore brethren we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh for if ye live after the flesh ye shall die but if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body ye shall live for as many as are led by the spirit of God they are the sons of God for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry Abba father the spirit itself bared witness with our spirit that we are the children of God verse 17 and if children then heirs heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ if so be that we suffer with him that we may be also glorified together glorified together glorify to gather see we have to be seeking God on every level see the Holy Spirit working within believers allows them to live lives of righteousness it allows us to live lives of righteousness which is seen as the fulfillment of God's moral law thus the operation of grace and obedience to the law of God are not in conflict they both point to righteousness and holiness see we can ask we can we can uh, ask but we can receive wisdom by drawing near to God and asking for it in faith see we can ask for it but we also can receive it by drawing near to God and asking for it in faith And so we got to seek wisdom on every side and all around we need to seek wisdom from God. God is the best one to seek wisdom from. Now, Lori shares with us, I suspect if someone asks, who would like to be mature and complete in your faith? Most of us will wave our hands wildly and yell, I do, I do. But when we discover the route to maturity winds, uh, winds through the wilderness of trial, oh no, never mind, maturity's overrated. And we've seen where some children say, can I come back home? I don't like being mature. I thought I was ready for the, all of this, but I'm not. And they want to show back up because they're not ready for it. But, but trials are especially good at revealing areas of spiritual maturity and our need for godly wisdom. When we go through trials, then we can see just how much we are immature spiritually just how much we lack wisdom as well and so she says during my daughter's turbulent adolescent years i found myself on my face before the lord crying out for wisdom almost every day how many of you know about that if you've raised children or grandchildren but your children and you on your face crying out day in and day out during those adolescence times with your children amen somebody and challenging patches in your marriage motivate you to seek wise counsel and resources see when folks have problems in their family they want to seek outside sources and seek social media social media cannot help you you got to seek God you got to go to God with the things that are going on in your marriage in your family and, and, and when times of conflict threaten your threaten your you know your situations or your jobs you know you got to pray and fast and seek God's will about how to proceed. We all need to seek God's will on how to proceed when life circumstances come upon us and get the best of us. We ought to seek God. When things are not going right, we need to seek God. You know, God is the best person that we can go to in the spirit and gather the things that we need. And one of them is wisdom and even courage, courage 
to face another day, right? And almost 40 years into the Christian life, Lori says, I still need to be reminded that God freely offers me his wisdom. God does not charge for wisdom. Now, when you go out and, and, and buy books and, and, you know, and go to school, you pay to, to learn about things and seek some wisdom and knowledge. Amen, somebody? But God gives us wisdom freely if we ask him for it. If we ask God for wisdom, that's one thing God will do is give it to us freely. He generously gives it to us without fault finding. Now, if any of you lacks wisdom, James wrote, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. See, it's no coincidence that James declared God's glorious hope filled promise. Woo, smack nab. <laughs> okay. In the middle of a life is hard, but God is good pep talk to the Jews, scattered abroad because of persecution. Can I get a witness, somebody? See, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may mature and complete, not lacking anything. James 1, 2 through Four. See, let me tell you something about this situation here, James 1, 2 through 4. Uh, you know, my brethren, because see, first of all, we got to have patience in temptation. My brethren, count it all joy when we fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. Now see, the Greek word perfect is teleos, reflects the biblical ideal of maturity, defined as a right relationship with God that bears fruit in a sincere endeavor to love him with all one's heart in undivided devotion, obedience, and blamelessness. See, we have to have undivided devotion towards God. We have to be in obedience towards the word of God and blamelessness. Deuteronomy 6, 5. But there's there's other scriptures. There's other scriptures. First Thessalonians 2, 10, you know, Matthew 22, 37. And, 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 and when we talk about temptations, give me a moment. When we talk about temptations, because we're almost done. But when we talk about temptation, the Greek word is pirasmo, pirasmoi. Now, it refers to some form of difficulty or pressure in our lives. And it usually sometimes comes from the world or, or Satan that God uses to try and prove our faith. And he also does it to develop in us per perseverance and godly character so that we may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. At right here, verse four, let me read it again. But let patience have her perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. Now, see, we are to face our trials, therefore, with joy. See, counting it all joy when we face trials and tribulations. Counting it all joy. Matthew 5, 11 through 12, and even Romans 5, 3, and Pete, 1 Peter 1, 6. Now, because of the righteous fruit they produce in us as we persevere in faith and hope, mm, our faith can only reach full maturity when faced with trials and opposition. James calls these trials a trying of your faith. He try, he's calling it a trying of our faith. Amen, somebody. And, and trials are sometimes brought into our lives. Now, we talked about this before, that sometimes God will bring trials in our lives so that God can test the sincerity of our faith. Sometimes God wants to test the sincerity of our faith and he will bring trials in our lives and scripture nowhere teaches that trials in life are an indication that God is displeased with us because some folks have said they must have did something wrong they must be living wrong for God to take them through all that why God keep taking folks through all of that see that can be farther from the truth God does the testing of our faith now some folks might test our patience man boy girl or woman may test our patience, but God will test our faith. Amen, somebody. And so they indicate that God recognizes our faith and has confidence in our commitment to him. 
Job chapter one, verse uh, chapter one through chapter two, excuse me, Job chapter one through chapter two. You may want to go read Job if you have not actually read the book of Job. We have gotten bits and pieces, some of you. But if you go and read the actual book of Job, you'll understand better. Reading, actually, the book of Job. Now, uh, you know, now, sometimes we look at trials as bad, right? But if we look uh, at trials as bad, they will be apart from God's sovereign purpose because God is a sovereign God. And now from God's perspective, however, trials enter our lives only with his permission. And it's only to accomplish his will. Excuse me. Part of his will is that we persevere, mature, and seek his wisdom. God wants us to have spiritual maturity. And he wants us to be able to persevere in all things, not just some of the things, but all things. Because if we persevere in all things and we don't give up, we're going to see the blessings. We got to keep moving towards the finish line and, we, and become overcomers. And see, the aspects of trials, they can bring deep and abiding joy. Because in the end, God's going to get the glory. But first, we understand, most of us, that trials in the beginning brings us pain. It brings us sorrow. It brings us sometimes to our knees and tears streaming down our face and we cry out. And sometimes we don't want to face another day. Sometimes we don't even want to get out of bed. And when we do, we looking down, trotting and beating down and everybody can see the dimness in us and to see the pain we carrying it around on us. That's sometimes how trials bring us pain and everybody deals with pain in a different way. But see, we don't get to opt out. And in the world, Jesus warned, you will have tribulation. John 16, 33. We're going to have tribulation in the world. But I'm going to tell you something. Be encouraged on today. My sisters, my brothers, be encouraged on today. Because we get to choose how we respond to those trials. We get to choose how we respond to tribulations and life circumstances and situations. We get to choose how we respond. See, we can seek God's wisdom. Or we can attempt to figure it out ourselves. Now, I'd rather seek God's wisdom because I know God's wisdom is way far more than I can ever contain or imagine. And so when I seek God's wisdom, he will provide information to me <laughs> that I wouldn't be able to get on my own. Amen, somebody. And so. Because if you're figuring it out on your own, you're going to mess some things up. We've seen how we mess some, th some things up trying to figure it out on our own. And I'm humble enough <laughs> to know that I can't figure out a lot of stuff on my own. And I've asked God to do it and God has shown me. When they talk about wisdom in older folks, they sought the Lord. And God helped them along the way. See, there's nothing wrong with sharing wisdom. And some folks might say, you can't tell me what to do. I'm not trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you something that's best for you, not against you, but to help you and be for you. Amen, somebody. And see, before we, most of us had a relationship with Christ, before most of us, we, we did everything we could. We tackled trials with everything we had, all our strength and everything else, right? And at that time, if we didn't have a relationship with Christ before we did, because not all of us have been saved. <laughs> and if you have, you backslid. But you know what I'm saying? You know, I'm not going to go there, but you know what I'm saying. Some people will catch it later. But however, it never occurred to some of us to ask God for insight or direction. We just figured it. We tried to figure it out on our own. We thought we was doing the best. I figured it out. 
we going in our own direction. And a lot of us found out that we were supposed to be going in the opposite direction. And sometimes we fall back into that same mindset. Sometimes we leave God out of the equation until we get desperate. Till we get on our last leg. Till we hit rock bottom. Somebody know what I'm talking about when we've left God out of the equation. Only when we've exhausted all of our own wisdom, not God's wisdom, we exhaust our own wisdom and our own resources and then we cry out to God and again he doesn't find fault when we seek his wisdom he generously gives it to us but why not seek it first before we go off on our own tangent why don't we seek it first that's a smart move that's having wisdom and knowledge you know that old, that scripture that my people perish or my people are destroyed, Hosea 4, 6, for lack of knowledge? Mm, because they didn't seek wisdom. So why don't we seek it first, right? See, James, the brother of the Lord, suggests another way, a better way. Ask God for wisdom. See what I'm saying? Ask God. Then believe what he tells you, James 1, 5 through 6. See, we got to believe what God tells us. Why? Let me ask you this question. Why seek the Lord? And ask for wisdom if we're not going to believe that, that the wisdom that God gives us is the wisdom we should follow. Why ask somebody if you already know the answer? Why ask me if you're not going to follow the information I gave you? Why ask me if we're driving in a car and I ask for directions or you ask for directions and the person gives you the directions? But you say, no, nah, I'm not going to follow those. I'm going to turn left when you told me to turn right. But we still going to get there. <laughs> we went all the way around the block, down the road, a few miles. Then we wind up there when we could have got there already. You see what I'm saying? It's like the, the Israelites, the children of Israel. They had to go all the way around. And they were, they, they was... Woo, hallelujah, 40 years. 40 years. You know the story. 40 years, you know the story. But God had already told him, give him the information. You see what I'm saying? So if we're not going, if we're not going to accept God's wisdom and receive it when we ask for it. And why ask God? Amen, somebody. I'm hoping I'm pricking somebody's heart because we all have been there. I'm just going to do it my way. God's way is too long. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, God's way is the right way. See, God told y'all your blessings, if you follow God, is not denied. They just delayed. But you got to follow God and persevere and be overcomers. See, knowing God's promises is a sure and steady source of wisdom for times of trial. It should give us hope because we need to persevere. We need some perseverance. Amen, somebody. And see, the first and most obvious source is the Bible. Because what does God's wisdom look like and where do we find it? Well, we can find it in God's word in the Bible. But you know what? We got to stop throwing open the cover like it's an emergency toolkit, fumbling around until we find something that looks like it might work. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Soon as trouble come, you go to the Bible and use it as an emergency tool and fumbling around to find something that looks like it might work and duct tape, tape it, using some duct tape to the problem. See, let me say this. Let me say this. And this is not to throw shade. See, I keep it real, you all. Uh, Jonathan Majors, not to throw no shade. But I saw what, I read an article and I saw where he had a Bible. I thought it was a Bible. They said it was, now you know, in his hand. 
Now, my question is, has he been reading the Bible all along? Has he been studying the word all along? Has he been living the life that God has called us to see folks that say, well, you judging? I'm not judging. I'm just asking a question because I saw the Bible and it came up. I was having a discussion with my dear, lovely mother. Praise God for mothers and their wisdom and knowledge. And she said he had the Bible because she saw the news and he was carrying the Bible in his hand. And she asked the same question. I wonder if he'd been using it all along. Amen, somebody. See, because we carry Bibles around when we get in trouble. We want people to see that we love the Lord and we got a relationship with Christ. And here's the Bible. Donald Trump had that Bible up there, too. Remember, he had the Bible. See, we, I'm just saying I'm not here to judge. So don't, you know, think of it that way. But just use, you know, some analytical thinking here. Use some analytical thinking. See, when we get in trouble, we want to run to the house of the Lord and give our life over to Christ. And then we never show back up. Because we think God worked it out that day. And so we good now. And we don't show back up until something happened again. Then we back at the house of the Lord. I'm just saying. I've seen it. I've, I've been around. Been in church. Been in the ministry. I've seen it. I know some of y'all, some of you all know what I'm talking about. You've seen it also. <laughs> partially giving their life over to Christ. Partially. <laughs> in and out. In season. But not out of season. You know what I'm saying? Somebody, somebody, matter of fact, many of you know what I'm talking about. And so he had this Bible. But I want people to be encouraged on the day. Read your Bible. Open it up. Don't just go to it in the times of trials and tribulations or use it as an emergency tool. But open it up every day. Read a scripture every day. Let the Holy Spirit guide you and lead you every day in the word. Five minutes in the car line. As I told you all, but when I say car line in the car, pray. When you stuck, pray in the car line. While you're praying, listen to some gospel music or a or, or, or sermon on the radio, whatever channel that you get. I think here we get 107.5 or 5.9 or something. But you know what I'm saying? And, and then when you get a little time at home or when you're sitting at the doctor's office, wait, or dental office or the hospital waiting for your procedure or check-in or appointment or you know what I'm saying? Or you had to go and support someone that's having a procedure. Read it then. Find the time to read and pray. See, we can't. Treat the Bible as an e emergency, you know, uh, toolkit fumbling around and hoping that we find something that look like it might work. See, we gain God's wisdom through a sincere and diligent search. See, in Proverbs chapter two, verses one through five, it describes it this way. And it's a different translation in the King James Version. It says, my son, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you, turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding. Indeed, if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, and if you look for it as for silver and search for it as for hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge, knowledge of God. Hmm. The word of God. And then there is a second source of God's wisdom. A second source. It comes through prayer. You know that prayer that changes things. You know that prayer that still works. You know that prayer is still popular. You know that prayer. That prayer that we prayed when we going through some things. That prayer that, that works in our lives. You know that prayer that gives us comfort and that prayer that gives us hope that prayer that gives us 
peace that surpasses all understanding. You know, that prayer that we can use to stand in the gap of, you know, that word prayer, P-R-A-Y-E-R, not P-R-E-Y-E-R, but prayer. You know, that prayer that we can pray for others. You know, that altar call prayer. You know that come up for special prayer when 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 you need it for a baby or a pregnancy or your child's going away to college or the military. You know that prayer. Or that prayer when your child got in trouble and they're going away to uh you know to on a vacation where they they really are not on vacation. You know what I'm saying? That type of prayer. Let's be let's be real here. Let's be real. You know that type of prayer. If we bathe our Bible in prayer, Bible reading in prayer, if we bathe Bible, our Bible reading in prayer, God often speaks to us through the reading for the day. It's important to pray. Pray over the word. And people might say, why is she praying over that? We ought to pray over the word. And at the end, have a prayer after the word has been delivered, after the word or the message has been told. See, he also speaks through sermons and biblical messages and the voice of his spirit in my heart. You know, you, you get those sermons and biblical messages and, and, you know, and sometimes, you know, what we forget to do. We forget to listen to God. And we'll spend all our time talking. And we will tell God, God, you got to fix this. I need you to help me with this. I need you to help with my child over here. I need you to help over here. We forget to listen to the Lord. We got to sometime remove the chaos, get out of the chaos so we can hear from the Lord. Taking a break away from the chaos to hear from the Lord. Getting rid of the noise. And sometimes... It's our own noise we're making. Amen, somebody. Somebody going to catch that. See, sometimes we up here talking so much to God. God, you got to fix this. God, show me what to do. Lord, show me how to handle this. Father, 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 I'm so confused. I'm frustrated. I'm anxious. I'm upset. Father, I need you right now. Instead of just listening. Because God already knew in your spirit that you needed him. He already knew you was anxious. He already knew we was frustrated. We was upset. God already know we even confused. A lot of us as believers are still confused. Amen, somebody. Let's tell the truth. We're still confused. And some of us are still, some of you, I don't know who you may be, so don't take offense to you, are still struggling in your conflict. Conflict that happened years ago, you still struggling. Then your children that were born in the conflict is out here struggling too. Because we haven't asked God for wisdom. When situations come up and we've made mistakes and we never saw God's wisdom, we kept going on and on and on, trying to do it on our own, giving everything that we have. And I hear folks saying that today, I'm doing all I can. But you don't hear them say, I'm doing everything that God asked me to do. In his will, I'm doing all I can. I'm, I haven't heard folks say that. In his will, I'm doing all I can. But I hear folks say, I'm doing all I can. And there's no disrespect to anybody. But we got to do what we can according to God's will. And God will open up windows for us, pour out in blessings. God will give us the strength to get through it. He may not take away those trials, but he'll give us the strength to get through it. He'll give us the strength to face another day, the, the courage to face and get out of bed, the strength to get out of bed and the courage to face another day. If anything you're doing is in a line, a line with the word of God and it's his will, guess what? God will make sure the desires of your heart. He'll make sure that it happens. He'll bless you. He'll give you the desires of your heart. 
See, because we can do all we can and it won't work. But when we give it over to God, turn it over to Jesus, he'll work it out. But see, we can do all that stuff, all that stuff. But when we embrace the words of Psalms 4610, be still and know that I am God. That's when our heart quiets and we can hear from God. We can hear him speak. Because it's not always about what's happening. It's about how we react to what has happened or what's happening at that time. See, even with that being said, God will import his wisdom through the counsel of others. Sometimes he uses others to counsel us through the Holy Spirit. But guess what we must do in that? We must choose our sources carefully. And this is important. And I want people to get this. Everybody cannot pray for you. Choosing your sources carefully because everyone can not pray for you. They're not qualified to pray for you. See, that qualification has to come from God through the Holy Spirit, his word, and, and they're being prayed up in the word and knowing the word for themselves. And there are some true warriors out here, prayer warriors. But we have to know the difference because everybody cannot pray for you and you need to be careful with that. That's why it is important to have spiritual discernment and to be watchful and alert. You got to see how folks is operating. And when you go to church, if you're in a church, you got to watch folks because everybody is not in church operating the way that God's house is supposed to operate. Some folks is operating God's house like it's their house, like it's man's house. But God's house will never be man's house. But we got some folks operating God's house like man's house. So you got to be careful who you ask to pray for you, even in the church. We got to choose our sources carefully. And we got to be careful who we blab our problems to. Because a lot of folks will listen to you. Some folks listening so they can go talk about you. Some folks listening so they can go gossip about you. Some folks listening so they can pray for your downfall. And some folks really do pray for others' downfall. See, God don't hear those type of prayers. But folks think they do because they don't have the wisdom that God has. They haven't sought it. So they think that they can go pray to God and ask for Julie or, or Shaniqua or or, 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 or Dominique or Dominique or, you know, or Julius, they think they can go ask God to pray for somebody's downfall. Lord, you heard what they said. And Lord, I want you to keep them where they at because they deserve it because they hurt me a long time ago or they did this to me or that. They hurt me a long time ago. Lord, I want you to keep them where they at. Lord, they just getting what they deserve. See, folks will pray like that for you. The ones that don't care nothing, that don't know the word of God, don't care about you and don't want to see you, uh, you know, rise up. They don't want to see, uh, you know, a change in you. They don't want to see you be an overcomer for Christ. You know, they don't want to. So they can pray against you. And some folks really will go and pray against you. You, you got to believe the truth. We see all this stuff going on in the world. You look, when God show me stuff, I believe God. <laughs> when he show you, you got to believe God. Trust God when he show you stuff. Don't just say, no, nah, I'm going to give him another chance. No, trust God when he shows you. Because God is the best trustworthy person that you can ever be have a relationship with. I'm just keeping it real. Families have let us down. Families have shown us they're not trustworthy sometimes. Family members, yes. Husbands, wives, yes. Boyfriend, girlfriends, fiancés, yes. Employers, co-workers, Church folks, yes, we have to trust God when he shows us who folks are. Trust in God. And we, like I said, we need to be careful and choose our sources carefully. See, we got to seek, we got to seek out those who are grounded 
in God's word. That's what I was just saying. They they know the, the word. They're in the word. They're grounded in it. They, they pray and they fast. And they seek God daily in their lives. You don't want somebody praying for you that don't seek God in their life. You don't want somebody praying for you that don't do the right thing, but then they're going to pray for you. You want somebody that's grounded in God's word. They're spiritually mature in their faith. And they're wise in their experience. They're wise. They've experienced some things and they've learned from those things and they've learned to seek God first and trust God's wisdom. Trusting what the, the feedback that God gives you. Let's say it like that. Let's make it plain. They trust the feedback that God gives them through the Holy Spirit. We got to have quiet time. See, there is no shame in seeking help. There's no shame in that. There is no shame in that. I want to go to Proverbs again because there's no shame in that, in seeking help. And I, I, I want to share with you about there is no shame in that. Amen, somebody. Proverbs 11, 14. Where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Let me read Clause A again. Where no counsel is, the people fall. When you do not seek the right counsel, you're going to fail. The people will fall. We have to seek good counsel. We have to seek good counsel and seek out and, cho and choose our sources carefully. As I said, when you seek out the wrong counsel, and this is, I didn't say that part, but I told you that, you, you know, I shared with you that if you blab to anyone, and you go to anyone and they say they're going to pray for you. Mm -mm. They praying for your downfall and not your uphill. And so when you choose unwisely counsel or anyone to pray for you. Mm -mm. The people will fall. That's not my words. That's in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14. Written by Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived reminds us where there is no counsel, the people fall, but in the multitude of counsels, there are safety. Beloved, everyone, believers and unbelievers encounter trials. It may not seem like it, you may be a believer and you may know a lot of unbelievers and you think that they live in a best life and how come you going through so much and they not? All of us encounter trials, whether we're believers or unbelievers. But you have to understand the unbelievers their success is short term. Or if they're not doing something correct, it's short term. Look at, uh, what's her name? Barbara Fowler. The one that was over the D, uh, diversity, equity, and in, in inclusion, Facebook meta. She has a lot of talent. A lot of talent, a lot of gift to help others, to lead them. 
And look at her now. Facing criminal charges. Federal charges for embezzling or not. No, committing fraud, excuse me. Committing fraud. Because she got greedy. See, the love of money, not money is the root of all. I hear people still misquoting that scripture. And they all write it. But it's the love of money. It's the root of all evil. And folks may say, well, so many the other folks have been doing it. But you know, just because the other folks have been doing it don't mean that she or any one of us should be doing that if we value our freedom. And not only that, not only that, if the other folks have gotten away with it, don't mean we're going to get away with it. And we see how there's a difference in the judicial system. But we have to be smart about it. Because some of those other folks, if you know who I'm talking about, they created, they will create businesses and get the services. But there was no businesses created, not legitimate ones. So all we could do is pray Pray that she's learned her lesson and and that uh, she can reconcile back to Christ, repent, and, and we lift up that sister. It's not to beat her down. We, we need to lift her up. And I, I don't know if there was people she salted, you know, consulted with or she sought out to, you know, I don't know that. And that's not my business. But guess what? We can pray for her. Because when there is no counsel, the people fall. And obviously, there wasn't no good counsel. The people that participated along with her wasn't saying, you know, girl, you got it going. You smart. You don't need to go this route. You don't need to do this. She didn't have no good counsel. I'm just keeping it real. And look, she's falling down. And we need to pray. Pray for her family and her husband. But what I'm saying is, people, there was no good counsel, obviously. And see, sometimes people don't like to see you make it. Like I said, they'll take from you. They'll let you make mistakes. And no one will never correct you along the way. And sometimes you have to let folks know. While somebody may come up to you and start... You don't have to tell your story. You don't have to tell everybody. Sometimes we have to give, be leaders and be good counselors and coach and encourage folks. You don't need to tell all your business. You don't need to talk to just anybody about your business. Because there are folks that will be praying for your downfall. There are folks that won't even pray for you because they don't know how to pray themselves. They're not even praying. They're operating under their own strength. <laughs> And will instead of the will of God and his strength that he strengthens, Christ strengthens us through him. So we have to be very careful. But see, the good news is the glorious hope we have as Christians is that God offers us his wisdom freely and without reproach. You hear that one? He offers us, God offers us his wisdom freely and without reproach. All we have to do is ask. And I pray that the two names I mentioned, not to beat them down, please understand that. I pray that they would reconcile back and understand uh, and learn something from what transpired and what's happened in their lives. And, uh, you know, I pray that they will learn from these experiences. I pray that they will learn from these experiences. 
Because anytime we fall down, we make mistakes. We should learn from those experiences. Just learn from them. And I pray that whatever transpired in those situations, that they will rec they will repent, reconcile back to Christ if they have relationship with Christ, uh, and 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 learn from these mistakes. And 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 when God delivers you from them, whatever consequences you have to face and endure, that you learn from the mistakes you made and move forward. Because your past mistakes do not have to determine your future. Sure, there's going to be some rough roads ahead, but that you will learn from them and you will accept and have courage as you're going through those things and seek wisdom from God, not from the world, not from money and material things, not from social media and people pumping you up. And even putting ideas in your head. Don't allow people to tempt you. To give up your freedom. Don't allow that. Ask God. For wisdom and knowledge. And then take heart. God's supernatural wisdom is only one prayer away. Not just his wisdom, but supernatural wisdom is only one prayer away. But let us from the heart, let us from the heart, forgive me, Father, for being so quick to tackle my problems in my own strength, in my own wisdom, and then to totally ignore you. Father God, I'm sorry for trying to do it on my own and leaving you out. Father God, I know better and I should do better, Father God. That I should seek out you and your face and your wisdom through it all. And allow me to wait on you. And not to wait so long in my situation that I'm so desperate. I have nowhere else to turn. Let me turn to you first, Father God. That I don't become so desperate. Let me use the Bible to read it. And to understand it and gain wisdom and knowledge each and every day. And not just use it as an emergency tool. And some duct tape to just temporarily patch it up. Because we know some tape wore out and needs to be replaced. And some tape don't even work right. It won't even stick. So Father God, let us use the word of God in our lives that will stick. Let us seek out your, your, your wisdom and your knowledge and and help us along the way to build our faith through you and the Holy Spirit. That thy word, thy will hide in our heart, Father God. Thank you for the reminder, Father God, by leading us to James chapter 1 verse 5. And even the, 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 the supplemental, uh, you know, the uh, supporting scriptures that came along with it and the supporting tools. Father God, thank you on the day for leading us and the promise that you give us insight and direction every time we ask you give it to us father god without fault finding you give it to us when we ask you give it generously and we thank you on today father god father god teach us to come to you first not to seek out sources that are that are not of you not to seek out sources that that are they're not grounded in your word that don't have the experience and they 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 don't pray every day they don't read the word every day father god allow us not to seek out those sources to seek out sources that we know good sources godly sources sources of wisdom of knowledge ones that 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 that, that, that have a faith that and, and that they've been through it and they and they seek you first and they pray daily and they read the word the ones that's grounded allow us to have spiritual discernment to seek out those over our life when we want prayer help us not to go around telling our business to everybody help us to go to the right sources but let us seek you first. And when we ask for help, let us 
seek out the right sources when we ask for help. But going to you first and putting you first in all things. Teaching us to come to you first, not last when we're desperate. And we've tried all we can in our strength and in our knowledge. But to seek you first. Every time we need wisdom, let us seek you first. And then, Father God, I pray over each and every one that they will be obedient to your word and seek your wisdom and faith and knowledge and get more grounded in your word, studying your word daily. Not just carrying a Bible around when they get in trouble, but seeking the word daily in their lives, in our lives. Not using it as an emergency tool every now and then, but to seek it daily, in season and out of season. Not showing up the church when things is bad. But showing up when things is going all right also. In season and out of season. Father God, I thank you for who you are. Thank you for this message, Father God. Thank you for your people. That you will protect them and cover them. Because Father God, I know that you and we know that you want the best for your people. And we thank you, Father God. And we want to receive the best from you. So allow us to be good representatives and, and give of ourselves and be the best we can towards you and for you. Allowing us to persevere through the faith, persevering in the faith, persevering through our trials and tribulations, but persevering in the faith. Thank you, Father God, for who you are. Thank you for this day. Thank you in Jesus name. I pray, we pray, amen, glory to God, he's worthy to be praised. And don't forget that if you're not a subscriber to the channel, to please subscribe. Thank you all to my new subscribers. Thank you for watching and tuning in. Don't forget to like and give the video a thumbs up. And please share this video with someone because they need it. Share it. And if you want to support the channel, you can support it through, uh, you know, the information is listed right there where you can support it through it, you know, uh, Cash App, uh, Zelle, whatever. And then don't forget to check out my Stand Up Be Counted page. That's where you'll see some of my jewelry posted. I got quite a few pieces. It's, you know, in the season of giving and you might want to purchase something for someone or just for yourself. Oh, it's Shireen Jewelry. And then don't forget to stick with it six weeks. Sticking with it six weeks. God bless you all. See you on Saturday.